Hello. Today we will discuss how to prove uniqueness of solutions to the linear partial differential equations of second order that we considered so far. So this lecture will be about this how to prove uniqueness of solutions to the wave equation or to the heat equation. Okay? Let us start with the wave equation. So we have the wave equation in the form with some inhomogeneity, which could be zero, and we consider this equation for x between zero and L and for T greater than zero. One can think that this PD models the following physical situation. We have two roads, one at x equals zero and the other at x equals L. And we have a string which can slide along these roads. Now the following two boundary conditions come to mind. The first one is called von Neumann boundary condition and the other is called Dirichlet boundary condition. So what is the first one? Okay, so the first one corresponds to the following situation. We have x line here and we have our two rods. We have the ends of our string and the ends of our string can have given velocity, x velocity here and here. So the first condition is that u sub x at L at t is equal to a given function b of t. Likewise, u sub x at 0 at t is equal to a given function a of t. We supplement this problem with the initial conditions at the t equals 0 line, saying that here the value of the function at any point x on this line t equals 0 is a given function f of x and the value of the time derivative of this function at x0 is equal to a given function g of x. This is the von Neumann problem. So the physical situation here is as follows, that the string can move whatever way here, but its x velocity along the green lines is described by given functions. So these are the von Neumann boundary conditions. Now, the Dirichlet situation is as follows. We have x here. Here we have our two rods to which the ends of our string are attached. And we prescribe what is the behavior of the amplitude of the function u at 0 and of the function u at L at any value of t and this is given by some function a of t and b of t. The initial conditions are similar like in the von Neumann case namely u of x0 is equal to a given function f of x and u t of x0 is given to the function g of x. So the difference is only in the boundary conditions here and here. Saying it very concisely, the Dirichlet conditions correspond to boundary conditions on the behavior of the amplitude of the search function at the boundary, whereas for Neumann boundary conditions are conditions for the derivative of the search function at the boundary. So let us write it down in terms of the equations, not in terms of the pictures. So in the von Neumann case we have whereas in the Dirichlet case we have where a of t 
b of t f of x and g of x are given let's say differentiable functions so today we will be trying to find a solution for the following problem prove the uniqueness of solutions to either a or b so in both cases the approach is as follows the proof is ad absurdum so we assume that u1 and u2 are two solutions and then we will show that there must be the same okay so how one does such things so the trick here is to consider a new function w of x and t which is just the difference between u1 and u2 so if we assume that u1 and u2 satisfy this system of equations or this system of equations then the function w satisfies the homogeneous wave equation in both cases a and b now in the von neumann case we'll have that the boundary condition that function w satisfies is equal to zero and for all t's greater than zero in the Dirichlet case we will get that function w itself at zero and at l is zero for all t greater than equal zero so these are boundary conditions satisfied by the function w which is remember w is composed of two solutions u1 and u2 in, in the case a w satisfies this boundary condition in the case b w satisfies this boundary condition now what about initial conditions they are the same in both cases the function w at t equals zero and its time derivative at t equals zero must be equal to zero so if we assumed that u1 and u2 are solutions either to the von Neumann problem or to the Dirichlet problem then the function w must satisfy homogeneous wave equation with initial conditions in both cases the same but with different boundary conditions which are in the von Neumann tense here and in the usual case here so now our goal is to show that if either this situation or this situation holds then w of x of t is necessarily zero for all x and t greater than zero that's our goal because then we can show that u1 of x of t is equal to u2 of x of t so our goal is now to prove that if this is satisfied or this is satisfied then necessarily we will have this in entire region and here something which is called energy method comes to play and this method comes from physics and is directly applied to the wave equation in the original physicist formulation so given w which satisfies the wave equation physicists define the concept of an energy associated with this particular solution to the wave equation to be integral from 0 to l of w sub t squared plus c squared w sub x squared and the integral is over dx 
this part corresponds to the kinetic energy of the wave or of the string and this part corresponds to the potential energy of the string. So this is a function of t because we integrate over tx functions of x and t and the time dependence remains here. So now the question is that if we have a solution to the wave equation in, the, in terms of this function w, what can we say about the dependence of time of its energy? How this varies with time? So to answer this question, just calculate the time derivative. So let's uh, let's calculate e dot of t. Okay. So e dot of t is integral from zero to l of. Yeah, uh, physicists usually put one half here. So let's put one half. This one half is to keep track of this square here. So if we now take derivative, we will not have any kind of coefficient here. So this will be w t times w t t plus c squared w x w x t. Now let's look at this term. This term we can write as c squared of w x w t sub x. So for this term to be equal something like this here, we need to subtract now the second derivative of x v t. And now this term is precisely equal to this term. So if we insert this into our time derivative of the energy, we'll get that it is integral from 0 to L of c squared wx wt sub x dx plus integral from 0 to L of wt wtt minus c squared wxx dx. So now, our function w satisfies the wave equation everywhere for x greater than 0, l smaller than 0, and t greater than 0. So this thing is identically equal to 0, and this thing is an integral over dx of derivative of some function with respect to x. So this is nothing but c squared v w sub x w sub t evaluated at the boundary between 0 and l, right? So we arrive at the formula for the time derivative of the energy like this. And now we can consider two cases. Either our either we are solving the von Neumann problem or Dirichlet problem. So now, if we are in the von Neumann setting, then at 0 and at L, the x derivative of function w is 0. But that's precisely our boundaries, L and 0, and the function w sub x stays here. So in the von Neumann problem, this thing will be 0. Let's look what will happen in the Dirichlet problem. In the Dirichlet case, we know that at 0 at L and L, the function w is equal to 0. 
but this equals zero for every value of t. So we also know from this that the time derivative at zero of the function w and then the time derivative at L of the function W is equal to zero. So again, we have here time derivative of W at, at x equals zero and x equal L, but there it is zero. So whatever case von Neumann or Dirichlet we are, so we just get that this is zero for all values of t greater than or equal to zero. So the energy is constant. And this is independent of this if we are in von Neumann case or in the Richler case. So now we can calculate what is the value of E at zero. The value of E at zero is by definition one half integral of zero of L of V of W sub T at X zero squared plus C squared W sub X at X at zero the X, right? But let us look at our w of t of x zero is zero in this case and also in this case. So this goes. Now w of x sub x we can calculate because it is this for every x in here. So w sub x of x at zero is zero and this is in both cases. So this is also zero. So the value of the energy at zero is zero and energy is constant. So all of this tells us that E of t, which is one half of zero of L wt squared plus c squared wx squared dx is identically zero for all t is greater than or equal to zero. But now this, this, this value, which is zero, is obtained in terms of integrating a function e of x of t being equal to one half wt squared to c squared wx squared. So you integrate, and this value is never smaller than zero. So how can you obtain zero integrating from zero to L a non-negative function? Only if E of X of T is everywhere zero. But this means that w sub t of x of t must be zero and w sub x of x of t must be zero everywhere for x. So the function w must be constant everywhere, but because of the initial condition, it must be identically equal to zero. Therefore, u1 is equal to u2 and the solution is unique. So we have just proven that if we have two solutions of von Neumann or of Dirichlet problem for the wave equation, then the solutions must be equal. And we have proven it by considering positivity property of a certain integral made out of the difference of the solutions. This procedure is called the energy method of proving of uniqueness. So let us now 
see how this kind of method works for the heat equation. Okay, here we only consider the Gisler problem. So we consider the heat equation with some inhomogeneity and we consider boundary conditions u of 0 t is equal a of t and u of l of t is equal a given function of time b of t and we consider initial conditions that u at x0 is equal to f of x given function so a b and f are given functions and you want this to be satisfied for t greater than equal zero and this to be satisfied for x between zero and l and the equation is given t greater than zero so now again we have the same problem proof uniqueness for the Dirichlet, Dirichlet boundary initial value problem. So as before, we assume that we have two solutions. We form W to be the difference and our aim is to prove that if u1 and u2 satisfy this, then w is necessarily equal to zero everywhere. Okay, so that's the strategy. And because of our conditions, the function w satisfies the homogeneous heat equation And with boundary conditions, W of zero T equal W of L of T equal zero. And with initial condition, so if we assumed that U1 and U2 satisfy this, then W satisfies this. To proceed in the way as we did it for the wave equation, we have to propose a counterpart of the energy integral. We consider the following integral, where w is our solution. So we have u1 and u2, we form this function w, and by means of it, we produce this function of time. We integrate w squared with respect to x between 0 and l. And now, as before, we ask what is the time derivative of this function? So, it is integral from 0 to l w w sub t dx. But our w satisfies the heat equation, homogeneous heat equation. So we can write it as k integral from 0 to l of w w x x dx. Right? And now we use this to write it as w w x sub x for this what i'm writing now to be equal to this we have to subtract w x squared right so in this way we can rewrite this integral as integral from 0 to l here is k of w 
w sub x everything sub x dx minus k integral from 0 to l a function which is called w x squared dx right so now this we can easily integrate because this is equal to k and now w times w sub x in the boundaries between 0 and l and we stay with this thing as it was here okay now here we use our boundary condition which is this one at the end at the ends of x namely at x equal 0 and x equal l function w is 0 so this thing is 0 and what we are remained with is something like this minus k integral from 0 to l from function wx squared dx now k is positive constant and w sub x squared is non-negative so this thing is always smaller than equal zero so this means that the function e as a function of time is not increasing right so e is not increasing function but e of 0 is 1 half integral from 0 to l of w x of 0 squared dx right let's look at our boundary condition our boundary condition says that this holds for x between 0 and l so therefore this is 0 so now we have a function e as a function of time which starts at 0 at t equals 0 and it is not increasing on the other hand from the very definition of function e of t we know that e of t is greater than or equal to 0 because it's an integral of non-negative function so now we have a function which is not smaller than 0 starts at 0 and when t grows it's not increasing so this function must be equal to 0 for all t greater than or equal to 0 Now, if e of t is equal to 0 everywhere and e of t is integral of w squared, so this means that w of x of t must be equal to 0 for all x between 0 and l and t greater than 0. So therefore, u1 must be equal to u2. And our solution to the Dirichlet problem of the heat equation is unique.